Ugh. Good day, critters. Happy Winter's Crest. It is currently a couple of days after Christmas. I have just returned from an out-of-state convention, Holiday Matsuri. Now I have to prep for another convention that's happening in seven days. So I will be making Yasha from Critical Role Campaign 2 in just a week. And no, I haven't started yet. But that's not all. I will also be participating in a huge Mighty Nine group photo shoot um, that is a week after the convention. I will be making the clothes and the wig and the sword for Anime Los Angeles, and then I'll have a week to make her giant bone wings. So I should stop yapping, and I'm gonna start breaking down her outfit from the reference, making a plan, and begin patterning her shirt and her pants. It's day one of seven of making Yasha for Anime Los Angeles. So let's go. Okay, I've been staring at this reference for a while and I am just so grateful that the original artist who designed these outfits put up this ref sheet because it has all of the layers and details included. And that's great for me. What's not great is that this is even more complicated than I originally thought. You can see the original splash art of Yasha, and there's quite a lot going on here. It's kind of difficult to parse what is what. But thanks to this reference, we can see that she has an undershirt and a semi-sheer overshirt that has just so many straps. I don't think I'm going to have time to make this super accurate. <laughs> I don't think I'll be able to make an undershirt and an overshirt. I will probably do some sort of mishmash and combine these into like one piece. I also like to see what other cosplayers are doing um, when we're making the same costume. It's really interesting to see how they tackle the issues that my brain can't wrap around. <laughs> so I found a cosplayer named Nora Dahlberg and they have a blog here where they have detailed um, their build process, which is so helpful. And you can see they started with this beautiful undershirt and then they made the sheer overshirt and it looks so freaking cool. I'll put the link to this website in the description because it is so well made. <laughs> that looks gorgeous. The thing that worries me with these straps is that I don't have like a dress form to put them all down on. I would have to be putting them on my own body and like pinning them to myself. I don't know how viable that is, to be honest. Am I gonna make this? Am I gonna make this? <sighs> oh, I'm so nervous. So, I have to decide if I'm actually gonna try to make the undershirt and the overshirt, or if I'm gonna try to combine them into one garment, or if I'm just gonna make it up and do whatever I want and say, good enough, because I only have seven days. <laughs> All right, let's brainstorm and I will let you know. <laughs> God. The shirt for Yasha is scary. So instead I'm gonna start patterning the pants. So I did some tests. These are the two fabrics I'm planning on using this for the main chunk of the pants and this is gonna be for that flesh section. That sounded weird. Plan is to make a pattern based on a pair of leggings that I already own. I'm gonna make the entire pair of pants out of this. I'm not gonna do any fancy patterning, I'm just gonna make a pair of leggings out of this fabric. Then I'm going to cut holes out of the side of the pants that I make in that geometric shape um, where you can see her skin and I'm gonna top stitch in a little panel of this power mesh fabric. Then with all those straps, I'm just going to use heat and bond. Iron-on stretchy heat and bond. And so I did a test to make sure that would work. And much to my surprise, it does. It works on the power mesh and it also works on this like shiny stretchy fabric. Will it all fit and actually look good in the end? I, I, I don't know. Sewing on those straps will take forever. But ironing them on, does easy breezy baby. I hope this works. <laughs> With my pattern finished, I can cut it out of the stretchy pleather fabric. This stuff is from Yaya Han's cosplay collection. It is expensive, but so worth it. The inside and outside 
all been sewn together on each leg and now I need to put the crotch together and sew up that seam. I also just learned that I have been threading this bobbin wrong the entire time in my excuses because it's a new machine and I'm still getting used to her. Uh, but she was a gift from a fan and you know who you are. So thank you. She she is genuinely wonderful. <laughs> Good machine. I had to rewatch the same tutorial video like five times in a row before I was confident enough to pin and sew these pieces. Nothing like a good sewing project for me to go full goblin mode. I made a pair of pants! Oh my god! I made a pair of pants and they fit! Now I have to cut some holes and hope I don't completely ruin the integrity of them. <laughs> I put the pants on inside out in order to draw on the cutouts. This was totally freehanded while I stared at the reference. Then I just hope that both sides were even. If I were smart in this moment, I would have laid the legs on top of each other and cut them out at the same time, but I didn't. These shapes are sketched out and now we trust the process and cut into the nice pants I just made. The holes are cut out and I'm going to fill them back in with a sheer nude power mesh fabric. Hopefully this keeps the integrity of the cutout shape while appearing to be an actual cutout. It was a real struggle to try and pin this fabric in because the new power mesh is so slippery. I pinned and repinned this one leg hole like five times this stretch iron-on that I'm going to try to like temporarily essentially tape these two together, glue them together, and then do a top stitch. I also don't know if this worked, but I might as well try it. <laughs> so to get the nude power mesh to say, I used heat and bond instead of pinning it. This should be like a nice secure glue that'll hold these two fabrics together. So I can easily top stitch it with my machine and it won't let the power mesh slip and slide around. All this heat and bond needs is the uh, the heat, so I blasted it with my iron and hope for the best. And my plan worked. I was watching my friend's dog this day, and he kept trying to climb into my lap while I was working. He was here trying to fight you. Yes, I know. I know. Can you go get Dana? Can you go fight him? The heat and bond made it so easy to top stitch this fabric. It would have been a nightmare if I had just pinned it. It worked. It worked! Look at this, wait. It worked! I also hemmed this top line here. Now I'm going to make a bunch of gray straps and work on getting those ironed down with the stretch applique and then ironing onto this and then I'll have my strappy pants. This might be the best pair of pants I've ever made! <laughs> I'm very excited. What I have here is a big square of the gray fabric that is going to be the stripies on Yasha's pants. And this piece of paper on top is the stretchy um, heat and bond. So I'm going to basically just going to iron this entire sheet on and then cut out the strips of it that will get ironed onto the pants. Iron, 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 measure, 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 cut, 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 and now I have straps. Wormies. In order to know where I attach each of these strappies, I marked up my pleather pants with a red sharpie. And not to worry, this sharpie is easy to get off later. Then it was just pinning and cutting and ironing the straps over and over again while following my lines. And like I mentioned, the sharpie can just be rubbed off with a little bit of alcohol on a Q-tip. Eventually, I did get confident enough with these straps that I didn't need to take so much time pinning them in place. But for now, I was really nervous about their placement, so my pants were stuffed with pins. This technique to make straps with heat and bond worked pretty well. For the 
black fabric, at least. Uh, but for the nude parmesh, uh, you'll see tomorrow. It is day two. My goal yesterday was to finish the pants entirely, and I didn't do that. Uh, the story is that it hit 10 p.m. and my back hurt, so I went to bed. But there's only like 20% more to do. I just have to iron on a couple more little strappies, and then the pants are done. So I will get that done first thing on day two. Then once the pants are done, I'm finally gonna get started on the top that scared me so much but I do think I have decided what I'm going to do. Do you like my new filming location? I just wanted to try something new. <laughs> but I'm talking too much and I still only have six days left. <laughs> Let's fucking go. The last bit of gray straps were ironed onto Yasha's pants and then I got to try her on and see my results. Okay, here are the Yasha pants with the boots that I ordered and I like them for the most part except these lines here on the side look really bad. You can see just how messed up and stretched this fabric. Oh, and I also cut a hole there. Oopsie. Um, <laughs> you can see how stretched out and messed up this fabric looks. Like, it is so ugly. <laughs> my plan is to just top stitch these stripes here with my machine and hope that it still stretches enough, but also, doesn't look like complete garbage because this fabric oh hi boys hello <laughs> this fabric um not the highest quality you know from five feet away they don't look half bad <laughs> it's still only 9 a.m on day two so i do still have a whole day to fix these and get started on the shirt that's not very yasha like is it <laughs> the pants are done and now i'm gonna make this shirt and I've decided what I'm gonna do. I am gonna make the two shirts, the gray undershirt and the black mesh overshirt. I am simply not gonna be as detailed on all those straps. I'm just not gonna include all of them. I'm once again gonna be using a shirt I already own to make the pattern because that's easier. Idea is going to be very similar to the pants, right? I'm going to be making the base of the shirt out of that power mesh and the gray, and it's just gonna be those big chunks of color and then ironing on the straps again. <laughs> not so bad. But yeah, just less straps. It's not gonna be screen accurate, but the black mesh shirt is gonna go over top of it and nobody's gonna notice. So for the rest of day two, I would like to get this pattern done. I would like to sew the base of the gray undershirt and I would like to start dyeing some fabric because I only have one shade of gray fabric and the strappies on the undershirt are clearly two shades of gray. So I have some black dye here, and so I'm gonna dye the gray just a smidge darker. It's gonna be like a drop of this, like not nearly the whole bottle. Okay, let's make a shirt pattern. I don't know why I'm holding this like a microphone. The shirt pattern is slightly altered so that the side seam ends a lot higher than it normally would. And I just freehand sketched that after tracing my shirt. Plus, I drew the seams that would separate the light gray fabric from the nude power mesh. Here's a pattern based off of my shirt. As you can see, there is a big V that is the nude section and then two chunks of gray. And then same thing with the sleeve. You have this top, which will be nude, and the underside, which will be gray. And I'm also going to be using this shape to trace the mesh shirt pattern. Fabric is cut and ready to be assembled. but. Before I get to sewing, I actually need to get a completely different pattern finish. The fur for the top of Yasha's cape. This is so that I can dye two batches of fabric at the same time. Some of the gray straps on Yasha's top need to be a little bit darker, and this fur needs to be black, so I might as well do it all in one go. It's time to dye. <laughs> what? Works. Call me darkness. Oopsie. Sorry, not sorry. You don't have to be sorry. Yeah, I did say I'm not sorry. I mean, I guess you're right. Uh, I don't recommend dyeing your fur or your fabric to match your shades. 
Uh, I shouldn't have been buying it in the right color to begin with. <laughs> well, that worked really well. Uh, it's gonna take a long time to dry, but I'm stoked at the color. What is it? You growling it about? I didn't show the final result of the gray strappy fabric after being dyed, but all I did was dip it into the dye bath for a few seconds so it would be slightly a darker shade. So I've been sitting here trying to think about how I'm going to attach those strappies to the undershirt and not have it looking like a complete mess like the pants did. I think I'm just gonna guess where they go on this nude piece and then pin them down and just top stitch them down with a straight stitch. And you're not supposed to use a straight stitch on stretchy fabric like this, but I don't care. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna be just like kind of winging it, making it look moderately like the reference. And then I'll be attaching um, these are like the bigger pieces that go onto here. Attaching these straps became sort of like a puzzle, determining which ones should go on first, which ones were getting cut, and which ones I had to leave longer to be ironed down again later. I know the shirt is going to be underneath another sheer shirt, and most of this detail is going to be lost anyway, so I'm not too concerned with perfectly following the reference. Okay, so all of these strappies have been ironed down with that stretchy heat and bond, and some of them have tails left because these lighter gray pieces are gonna get stitched down here, and then I will add those tails down so it has a continuous line. I'm also thinking about unstitching the trim that I did on this. Since I'm just doing iron down and top stitching anyways, I might as well just top stitch this down, iron on the strappies, and then top stitch those down. So, yeah, that's where my thoughts are at. This is actually going shockingly well. Took off the trim of this piece, and you can really see how the shirt is starting to come together. And you can see where these lines are folding over on top of here. Um, those still have the iron on, so I'm gonna iron those down, and then top stitch all along this. And then I will do another big strip to cover up the raw edge. Once the nude and gray larger sections were sewn together, this really started to look more and more like Yasha's top. I was really happy with how it was coming along, but also very nervous about putting this much work in and not knowing if it'll fit until I was all done with it. I was feeling a lot of major back pain on this day of crafting and I just couldn't figure out why until I saw the footage. <laughs> uh, goblin mode going too hard today. Remember how I said I wasn't actually gonna follow the um, reference that much and I was gonna make it easy on myself and not do all the strappies? I lied. <laughs> Okay, I didn't actually follow the reference exactly. You can see some of the strappies missing, but I did a lot of them and I still have to top stitch all of these, which is gonna take a lot of time. And I haven't started the sleeves yet. So I'm gonna move on to the sleeves and save the top stitching of this tomorrow. And then I'll hopefully be able to put all the pieces together and try it on tomorrow and hopefully it fits. It better fit. Freaking fit. The sleeves were assembled in pretty much the exact same way as the front of this top. However, it was at this moment, the Fire Nation attacked. My iron betrayed me. I was flabbergasted. How did that happen? How did that happen? No, it was fine before. What did I do? Why did it do that? 
what? Okay, hold on. <laughs> Why did that happen? It's never done that before. What the fuck? Um... <laughs> I guess I'm glad that happened at the beginning of the sleeve and not when I was like almost done, but like... Can anyone who does sewing and ironing more often explain to me what happened? What science caused that? Is it... It didn't happen before, and then it didn't happen when it did it again. Excuse me if I'm a little confused about it. Why did it suddenly hate me? What did I do to you, sleeve? What the hell? It completely melted this fabric, even after working so well all day! Ah! That was really discouraging. So, I'm just gonna go to bed. <laughs> End day two here. Um, and I'm gonna clean my iron in the morning, once it's cooled down, and then try, try these sleeves again. I'm so bummed now. <laughs> anyway, good night. Good morning on day three of making Yasha. It's raining in Los Angeles! And if I had my way, instead of making a cosplay in six days, I'd be doing this. But instead of doing that, I'm going to sit in my craft room and make this cosplay. I did clean my iron, and I tested it out, and it didn't burn fabric this morning. So, I'm going to trust you. Don't fuck this up for me. I made a new sleeve after I destroyed one last night, and now I finally get to iron on all of my little strappies and hope I don't burn another hole in this and have to make a third sleeve. Right back to it, with the heat and bond and the iron. Now, with the much less likely chance that I'll straight up melt all of my hard work. It's at this point I'm finally a little bit more confident with just slapping down these straps and laying the iron right on without bothering with those pins, which saved me a lot of time. Now that I am done ironing all these straps, I have to top stitch every single one of them. Um, that's gonna be quite a lot of sewing. I hope it doesn't take me all day because I would like to assemble this shirt sometime today and then also get to the sheer black shirt and finish that. But as we found out from the pants, if I stretch this gray fabric on top of the nude, it will get all frayed and ugly and I don't want that to happen. I'm also nervous that once I top stitch it and then assemble it, I won't be able to put it on. It won't be stretchy anymore. That's just gonna be a risk or we're gonna have to take. And you're probably wondering, what about the back of the shirt? Well, guess what? This design has a cape, so I don't have to think about it that hard. It's just gonna be a big piece of gray fabric. I was blessed by a little furry visitor who told me to stop sewing and pay attention to him. Even with only five days left on this project, I will always take time for my puppy. But of course, it's right back to sewing afterwards. stitching done! It only took a few hours and I definitely didn't do a nice clean line. But who cares? This shirt goes underneath another shirt and you'll be the only one who knows. So here are all my pieces, right? I've got my top, the back is underneath, and my two sleeves. The first step is going to be sewing together this seam up here at the shoulders. Then I'm going to sew sleeves on along here this nice long round thing. And then once the sleeves are on, I can sew up from the wrist all the way up to the armpit and down to the waist. And you've already seen me sew a bunch in this build, so I'm simply going to pin this together and do my thing and show you how it turns out. It actually and it fits okay. The arms are super loose. You can see a ton of extra fabric in there. But like, it's not horrible. I'm gonna probably adjust this. I'm going to 
finish this seam, finish these seams at the cuff. Last touches on this, and then I get to start the black shirt that actually covers all of this hard work. Yay! Like I mentioned earlier, I use the exact same pattern as the gray undershirt to make this sheer black shirt. With a few changes, like that hole near the top of the collarbone, and I also sketched out some of the stripy details. This fabric is a nice sheer black, similar to the power mesh, but much less slippery and a lot less stretchy too. The straps for this one will be made out of that same black pleather that I used for the main pants. The pleather gets the heat and bond attached, measured, and cut into strips, just like that gray fabric from earlier. Back at it again at the Krispy Kreme with this iron and these straps. Following the reference, I'm just going for it and getting through it as fast as I can. All of the seams for this top shirt have to be French seams because it's see-through. And if I just did regular seams, you'd be able to see the messy edges through the sheer fabric. But a French seam is just pinning the wrong sides together first, sewing that up, flipping it so it's right sides together, and sewing it again, and then all of your seams are encased in like a nice little pocket, and it looks so much cleaner when you do it that way. It takes more time, but it does look better. Time to try both shirts on together and hope that it fits. I was very nervous to try on both of these shirts. Unlike the pants, I couldn't just test the fit until after I had added all of these straps, which would have been a lot of wasted hard work and time if these shirts had been too small. But as it turns out, I didn't have anything to worry about. Maybe one day I'll learn the proper technique for patterning garments, but for now, tracing my clothes has been working out for me. I think this was a complete success. Um, I do notice one of the strap pieces peeling off along the booby here, so I'm going to double check that all of these are ironed down properly. But it fits, it's nice and tight, they look good together. It hangs down where I want it to hang. Um, you can still see the details underneath. Like, how awesome does this look? Oh my god! Hey, Dita! <laughs> I, I like to think he's proud of me, too. The shirts and pants done. I think I've actually completed all the hard parts of the costume. And I want to move on to the cape, which will be pretty easy. It's just one big piece of fabric that I get to paint. Like, how awesome is this? Remember that fur piece I dyed yesterday? Well, it's finally dry and ready to be brushed out in preparation of starting this cape. I do recommend adding conditioner when washing any fur fabric. It makes it softer and easier to brush. It's nearing the end of day three, but I want to get a little bit of work done on Yaku's cape before I go to bed. And this is the fabric I picked up for her cape. It's this nice, deep midnight blue and like, thick and stiff canvas fabric and I picked this up at a crafting thrift store for super cheap and I figured it would be super easy to paint on because Yasha's cape has like a light blue gradient and also lightning bolts going down it and I figured I could just mix some acrylic with fabric medium and then paint it directly on some nice stiff fabric. And the thing that's going to make this really easy is that I already have a finished cape to use as a pattern. This is part of another cosplay I'm going to wear to Anime Los Angeles. So I'm just going to trace this cape. Easy. Is this cosplay also finished for the convention in five days? After a very long day of crafting, I finally finished out day three with tracing this cape and cutting out my fabric. Now it's time for bed.
Good morning, day four. I'm going to paint this cave now. You can pretty easily paint any non-stretch fabric you'd like by mixing fabric medium with acrylic paint, which is what I'm doing here. But while I'm sitting here on the floor, let me tell you a little bit about why I'm so excited to be making this Critical Role cosplay. Oopsie, the paint is leaking through the fabric and getting on my floors. Uh, we'll just put that back. So late in 2019, I was contacted by my friend who asked me to make a cosplay prop for her. We both had done some work for this company that was not so nice to us, her way more than me. And then she told me to watch this web series that she was on where the company was a lot less cruel and actually treated her like a person. And she told me about the show and I had actually heard of it before because a bunch of my other art friends had jumped into that fandom. I checked it out and I was like, girl, those episodes are four hours long. Oh my God. Uh, very soon after that, I got an animation job where I basically just sat in an office and drew backgrounds all day. And I had two monitors. So I said, you know what? I'm just sitting here all day. I've got more than four hours to spare. And I put on this show that she recommended, Cut of Roll Campaign 2, Episode 1. Very shortly after that was early 2020. Uh, <laughs> and then I had all day to watch these four hour episodes. And before I knew it, I was deep, deep in the Critical Role fandom. She got me. She said, girl, you're going to like this show. And she was right. I like it. I like it a lot. I have so much Critical Role fandom stuff in my apartment, from stands to pins to prints. I have a couple of the statues, and I'm probably going to get the whole set in the Mighty Nine, because the Mighty Nine just... They mean a lot to me. I think anyone who got into something during the Panini, like, that thing got them through some shit, you know? My thing was Critical Role. My favorite character is Essex, by the way. I truly found, like, just an incredible group of people within the Critical Role community. The coolest artists, the coolest cosplayers, the coolest everyone. This is gonna take a fucking while, damn it! And a while it did take. So, this chunk is still wet, but this chunk is mostly... Actually, this chunk is still a little wet too. <laughs> but it's dried a little bit more. Um, and you can tell, it has sucked up quite a lot of paint. The fabric fibers are basically soaking in the paint. And so the pigment isn't staying, so this is all drying down to a much darker shade. However, doing a little round two paint job on top of the dry paint job seems to be working a little bit better. So I am going to let this dry and then do it again so that it's a little bit more pigmented. I'm also really glad that it's um, leaking out of the other side because that means I just have a lot less work to do because I was going to paint both sides but now it's just going over on its own. Having a little snack while I wait for my paint to dry and then diving right back into it with my fabric paints and adding the lightning bolts on this cape. And of course, I'm just winging it. Okay, I'm done painting the cape, and now it's going to take about 24 hours for the leather paint that I used to actually fully dry. But once it is finished drying, I'm going to rough up the hem to be that uneven tattered cut, and I'm also going to take a shower because I am covered in paint. I finished the bulk of Yasha's cape, but it is still not complete without the straps that hold it on the body and a couple little accessories. So I'm just gonna go ahead and sew a bunch of tubes. And those will get ironed flat, 
and become the straps for the cape and also the belt. For the accessories though, I had them 3D printed. <laughs> um, my friend offered to 3D print some stuff for me and these files are available on Etsy. I will put the link down below. This is the iconography of the Stormlord, which goes right on the front of the cape. And then you've got a couple little uh, pentagons. And of course we've got some cones and these are just some more details that'll go on the ends of the chains for the cape and the belt. Normally I don't have access to a 3D printer, so I would have made these out of foam or warbla. All of these with the belt and the cape will get assembled tomorrow when the cape is done drying. Tubes done! You don't get a tutorial for this because they're just tubes. Iron flat to become straps and a belt. The 3D prints also got sanded, and then I went in with silver rub and buff. This does right what it says in the name. You rub and buff it into the surface and make it shiny and metal looking. I went through a whole process of trying to make UV resin diamonds for the blue parts on this Stormlord icon, but I trashed all of that and used nail polish instead. If it works, it is not stupid. These cone shapes also needed holes drilled through the tops so that I could slide wire through and hang them from the costume. I do not recommend using a drill like this, by the way. This is not my most safety forward moment. I continued on with these accessories by adding more wire and chains, and I put the pieces on my body and hold them up and measure them that way to get them to sit where I want. I didn't want to have to assemble this belt every time I wore it and like put it through the belt loops and stuff. So the tie is sewn down permanently and same thing with that buckle. And then the back will just have some Velcro on it so it goes on simple and quick. And nice. Originally, I bought these chains for my Orin the Red cosplay from Baldur's Gate, but they turned out to be perfect for Yasha too. More trying on, measuring, and cutting, and assembling these little details. The O-rings that the chains are attached to can be skewered right through the pleather fabric so that they stay in place. got way more done today than I thought, which is very exciting. The only major things I have left are the wig, finishing up the cape, she has a bracer on one arm that I haven't started yet, and a sword. I am okay with not finishing the sword in time for ALA. I will still start it and give it a good try, but if I don't have it, it's not the end of the world. I'd much rather have the full outfit. I do still have a good few hours left of day four, so I'm gonna start on that bracer. I at least wanna get it patterned, but if I have enough energy to begin the construction, then I'll do that. Tomorrow, the main goal is going to be finishing the cape. It's going to be attaching the fur and attaching the belts and attaching the little storm accessory and chains. Then I will actually be able to try on all the fabric once I do that and see the full outfit together for the first time. Oh, I'm, oh, I really hope I like it. <laughs> then as soon as the cape is done, I'm jumping right into the wig because I don't just have to style it, I also have to color it. I haven't felt nearly this much energy to craft in quite a long time. So this is refreshing and it feels good to be like, jim, 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 jim. make, 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 make. My spouse is making pizza, and I'm gonna eat that and then get back to work. Before ending my crafting for day four, I ended up finishing the whole bracer. If you wanna get into cosplay and you've never made anything like this before, I recommend trying a bracer. I patterned this the same way I patterned all my armor with cling wrap and duct tape.
This pattern will become two millimeter EVA foam that gets covered in that black pleather fabric. This bracer also is getting more of those gray strappies ironed onto it with the heat and bond. It's a good thing I made a bunch of extras earlier. And to finish it off, I sewed right through the fabric and the foam to add some Velcro and a little handpiece. And this thing just slides right on. Happy New Year's Eve, by the way. I'm really looking forward to making more videos in 2024. And it's 9 p.m. now, so I'm gonna go to bed. Welcome to 2024 and day five of this Yasha build. I think it's pretty normal in the new year for most people to have like a lot of goals that they set for themselves. Resolutions, if you will. I'm no different. In 2024, I would like to continue to make YouTube videos. I would like to get better at making YouTube videos. I also would like to read more books. I want to finish Orin. I want to connect with more people, more people in the community, more cosplayers, do more group shoots and couple shoots and all that kind of thing. I want to make more friends. I got a lot done in 2023, including making a centaur and then competing twice in two different contests. Actually, I competed three times and I didn't win in <laughs> any of them. Maybe in 2024, I will vow to, well, I can't really control if I win a cosplay contest. I'll vow to do my best again and compete if I can. Now let's actually work on completing this awesome cape and starting this wig, which Gonna need some work. <laughs> Yasha's cape is rough and tattered and worn down at the ends. I went in and started hacking at the bottom edge with my scissors. If you have more time and wanna age your fabric even more, you can also rub at it with some sandpaper for even better weathering. The fur trim at the top of the cape is pinned and sewn right down with a top stitch. I was really happy with the length and shape of this cape when I tried it on, but it needs more permanent attachments. I'm taking those two belts that I made yesterday and pinning them into place and just sort of feeling out where they should go. Once I've settled with the placement, there is Velcro sewn into the ends of the straps and to the underside of one cape edge, so it sits nice and sturdy on my shoulders. The Stormlord icon gets hot glued right under the fur. But of course, there's even more details and accessories on this cape. These have the same steps as the belt accessories. I'm just holding them up in the mirror to check the lengths and adding o-rings and clasps to attach these chains. The cape being finished means I finally have all of the fabric ready to try on. Five straight days of crafting has led me to seeing what I actually look like wearing this cosplay. No pressure or anything. But of course, yet again, I never had to worry. Even without the wig or the makeup ready yet, you can hear it in my reaction. Matt, I look really cool. <laughs> you did a good job. What? There's no way. Yeah. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm so close. I made this in like, I made this in like four days. Okay, the main body of the cosplay is done. I can put on all my fabric pieces. However, I don't have a wig yet. Yasha's hair is a black to white ombre, and I could not find that pre-made anywhere. And I also really needed it to be a lace front because Yasha doesn't have any bangs. It's just her hair coming straight out of her head. That means my only option was to get a plain white lace front and do all of the coloring myself. The thing is, you can't just dip dye a lace front wig because then all of the lace, which is like nude colored, would dye the color. It would dye black. And then it would, I would still have like a harsh black line where it is attached to my forehead. Luckily, one of the most generous mothers of cosplay, Kimpatsu, has a tutorial about how to dye a lace front wig without ruining the lace. And you can just use alcohol markers. Basically, just go in layer by layer and draw on the color to the length I want it. 
I did do a test to make sure it works and it does. It works great. And it bleeds a little bit once you add hairspray, which is kind of a bummer because I am going to need to add a lot of hairspray. <laughs> but it doesn't bleed so much that it's like, oh my god, I got Sharpie all over my skin or like ruin my costume. Luckily the costume's black. <laughs> when possible, do little tests when you're about to do some crazy shit to a wig because you might not have the time or money to buy a new one. Okay, time for you to get a new hairdo. When changing the part or style of a wig, I recommend using a steamer. The heat will remold the fibers of the wig once it cools down, but it won't actually melt them. I used this tool on Yasha's hairline and made the side of her hair lie flat where it would be braided later. After this cooled down, I went in with those black markers and some more alcohol on a Q-tip to help blend out that ombre. The Kimpatsu cosplay tutorial I followed for this step is linked down in the description. And this is what I spent the entire rest of my day doing. Good morning, day six. Yasha build. I didn't get the wig finished last night because I ended up going out to dinner with friends. It's fine that I lost the time on the costume because I got hot pot and that was worth it. This morning I'm on puppy time, so he's going to a little dog park. Then I'll, as soon as I get back, it's wig time. Hey. <laughs> Continuing my work from the previous day, I just scribbled with this black marker color for the next few hours until the whole top of the wig was covered. Okay, the dyeing part of this process is done. I think. Um, I feel like I got every strand pretty well. I probably missed some and it's definitely not perfect. Like there is some color inconsistency, but I guess from a distance it looks fine, but it fucking stinks like alcohol markers and I stink and I've been humping these markers all day. So I'm going to go rinse this out and take a nice long shower and smell something besides markers. I did accidentally recreate the legendary cosplay myth of Homestuck Hotel Room Sharpie Bath by actually dyeing the bottom of my tub when I rinsed out this wig. <laughs> I didn't spend any more of day six actually working on Yasha. There were still two other cosplays that I vowed to finish and wear to Anime Los Angeles, so I used the rest of my day to work on those. The night peach that I finished had already been 99% crafted before Christmas, and I just had to add some attachments. I also promised my friends I joined their bunny girl group as Mikuru from Suzumi Haruhi, and so I spent some time styling her wig. The last steps of Yasha were saved for the very last day of crafting. It is day 7 of 7. I still haven't styled this wig. After I finished dyeing the wig yesterday, I went to go rinse it out and let it dry and the ink was still bleeding all over my hands and so i washed it again and a third time and a fourth time and a fifth time and then i let it just dry overnight however um let's just do a quick little uh run my fingers through here real quick still bleeds so despite the fact that I absolutely did a test of this ink and ran it through water, then ran my fingers over it to see if the ink would bleed, and it didn't, I was betrayed. Again. And the extra frustrating part isn't really that this wig bleeds, is that there is a perfectly acceptable lace front Yasha wig out there, and I just couldn't find it. My friend sent me the link after I had already started dyeing this thing, and that wig takes like a whole month to ship, so I don't have time for it now. Since it is day seven of seven, I am simply going to style this wig while it slowly dyes my fingers black. 
Luckily, I don't have to worry about it dyeing the costume because the costume is black. So visually, it's pretty good. Um, practically, not so much. This side is going to be braided back. This side is going to get some braids in it and then flowers and little metal pieces and little bits of fabric. It's the last full day I have to work on this, so I'm going to just go for it and really try to get some work done on that sword. Um, we're not leaving until like 3 p.m. tomorrow, so I'll we'll also have all morning tomorrow to finish the sword if I want. We'll see. I won't be super beat up about it if I don't have the sword with me. It would just be neat. <laughs> I resigned myself to just having the tips of my fingers dyed black while I worked on styling this wig. Don't let this footage fool you, by the way. It did take a full 10 tries to try to make this braid look decent. Once I'm happy with it, this braid is locked into place with a heavy dose of got to be glued hairspray and a blast from my heat gun. And since I really wanted this to lie flat and sturdy, I went in with some hot glue to keep it from getting frayed. Yasha has a lot of detail in her hair. Not just braids, but locks too. On real hair, these are formed by natural matting over time and twisting them into shape, but on a wig, you have to get a lot meaner with it. I'm grabbing a big strand and teasing the absolute shit out of it, twisting and backcombing at the same time. It looks like a tangled nightmare at first, but I spray it with got to be glued and then I melt it with my heat gun. Extra detail is added to these locks and braids by bending metal wires around them and then gluing in strips of blue fabric. Keep in mind that this is not reversible on the wig. Once the fibers are melted, they're melted. That's it. Plus, hot glue will not come out of a wig unless you cut it out. So this style is permanent. a closer look of the section of wig that was turned into a lock. Okay, I've added all the braids and dreads to the wig and I'm gonna try her on. This is to make sure I don't want to add more before I start gluing in those little flowers because once I do that the wig will be done. This wig does have combs sewn into the cap which keeps it on my head super securely. I am definitely mostly happy with it. Okay, I'm gonna add more braids and dreads into this chunk, and then I will check back in with you when I start adding flowers. These are just simple fake flowers that you can pick up from any craft store, and just like the other details, they're hot glued right into the wig. The wig is done. Now all that's left for ALA is Magician's Judge, which is Yasha's giant eight foot great sword. And you might be thinking, how in the heck are you gonna build a giant eight foot great sword when there's less than 24 hours until you leave for the convention? It's 3D printed. The Critter community is amazing and there is a full 3D print you can buy of Yasha's sword from Petsy. Um, it is in parts though, so I do need to assemble it. And I've never assembled a 3D printed pump before. I'm probably gonna go find some super glue. And I also have to stop at the beauty supply store to get makeup for Yasha, because half of her face is blue. I did lay all these pieces on the ground and it's bigger than me by like a lot. Because I'm only five feet tall. Actually, I'm not even five feet tall. Super glue. Assemble. Magician's Judge is my first time assembling a 3D printed prop, and it's freaking huge. I picked up some super glue from my local CVS, but in the future, I'd like to get a brand that's more recommended for 3D prints. I mean, it worked, but it wasn't super easy. So, it says it bonds instantly. My fucking ass. I think this is the wrong kind of glue. <laughs> I also only noticed afterwards that I didn't do a very careful job of putting these pieces together. They were off by a couple millimeters and that makes a huge difference in a sword like this. 
The other important thing I got wrong was the type of dowels I put into this sword for stability. The Etsy listing I bought this print from recommends long metal dowels, but the only thing I had on hand was wood. Still, I fully assembled Magician's Judge, thinking both the glue and the wood dowels would be good enough for this project, and I was sadly mistaken. She is assembled and taller than me. The glue did work. Um, the 10 seconds on the label was a lie though. And I discovered something the first time I picked her up. And that is that these wooden dowels are not strong enough to hold this sword up securely. I can hold it like this and like this and like this but I can't actually like pick this sword up without these wooden dowels cracking and the glue right here cracking. They did say to use metal dowels and not wooden ones, so I'm sure if I'd used metal this would have been a lot sturdier, but I don't have metal and I can't cut metal. So knowing that this sword is kind of fragile has me rethinking bringing it to anime Los Angeles. I think I will leave the sword at home and just bring her to the photo shoot. I said I would be upsetty spaghetti if I didn't have the sword for ALA, but now that I've put it together and have decided not to bring it, I am now upsetty spaghetti. <laughs> but I'm traveling to Anime Los Angeles on a train, and when you're at a convention, you do have to be more cautious about people bumping into you, about getting too excited, about just kind of losing focus, not paying attention to your fragile pieces. Conventions are just the easiest place to break things in cosplay. So now that I'm done with the sword, I'm technically done prepping Yasha for ALA. I do still have to do a couple small things for the other two costumes I'm bringing. So I'm just gonna go do those. And tomorrow, we leave for the convention. So let's go. Good morning. It's day two of Anime Los Angeles. Yesterday we just showed up and picked up our badges and today I'm actually wearing Yasha. So I've got my makeup down here and we're gonna do that and eat breakfast and get ready to go out. Finally show off my new cosplay. The first time doing the makeup went pretty well, I think. Except for the eyebrows, I'm gonna do those in a different way on the day of the Mighty Nine shoot. I practiced my rage face in the mirror and soon I was ready to walk down to the convention center. To be honest, I was so nervous and excited for the Critical Role meetup and the convention itself and how this cosplay would look that I uh, pretty much forgot to get footage of the costume by itself, except for a couple of quick shots. So, sorry. I did, however, have my wonderful spouse get footage of the Critical Role cosplay meetup. And it was at this point I realized I really had no reason to be nervous for this event. Just a few days ago, I was going on and on about how wonderful this community is and they continue to prove me right. The nicest, coolest, and most talented group of fans I have ever been around. Critters are all out here putting time and effort and passion into making these intricate designs because just like me, they love Critical Role. While I was here with my fellow fans, I made sure to ask a few of them their thoughts on this silly D&D show. Would you like me to squat so I can shoot her? It's okay. Why critical? I love fantasy and I love silly, extravagant costumes, and those are just all around critical. Why Molly Mom? Because I love silly, extravagant costumes and I love putting too much detail into things. You know what? I understand that. Yes, and then fun. you're 70 hours in going, why? Why, why? did I choose this? Why? Why <laughs> not? Um, honestly, I got into it because I think a buddy of mine just started like listening to it on like, Spotify, and I was like, oh, what is this? It's so nerdy, I gotta get into it. And then, to, and then I started playing D&D, &D and he me out. Why for? He has a beard, and I figured it was a little easier 
to do it. I started with Molly and I'm still doing Molly. Mm -hmm. um, but I felt like this one was a lot easier to do because Molly has so much embroidery if you saw Sav. Yes. So. I've been watching your build on Instagram, so thank I'm very you. excited no, to see it okay. together. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's all real metal, metal armor, and real leather, and it's all done by me besides metal. Oh, no. Yeah. Look how beautiful this Ford cosplay is, by the way. Real metal and leather in this build. How cool is that? Um, I was looking for a new show after I finished The Adventure Zone and was like, hey, Liam O'Brien's in this one, and I really like Gara. And then it sucked me in so quickly. <laughs> and it's fun to see people that have that sort of connection. Why Essex? Uh, how can you not the hot boy though? Hot boy! Hot boy! <laughs> uh, I really like competent characters. There's Aww. something to be said about like watching characters grow. But I've seen far too many shonen anime and now I'm at a point where I'm like, if you show up and know what you're doing and it's about emotional change, I love that. Okay, I'm back in the Airbnb after the Critical Role meetup and I think it went really well. Uh, people were very stoked about my Yasha, people were very nice. Now I'm gonna get changed, I'm gonna shower, and go back and enjoy the convention. Woo! My time at Anime Los Angeles was coming to a close, I had a really, really good time, and I successfully busted out a whole new cosplay from scratch in just seven days! I am back from the anime convention, and I am so glad I brought Yasha. That was incredible! That was so much fun! Oh my gosh, I love wearing Yasha to a convention. I love wearing Yasha and seeing other critters and getting photos, videos. Ah, ah. I love Critical Role. But of course, Yasha isn't actually finished yet. I have to do her sword. And even though I said I was going to do her bone wings at the very beginning of this, I do not have time for that. I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know why I thought I could do that. I can't. The last steps to finish the sword should actually be really, really easy and really, really simple. <laughs> While I was saying it was gonna be easy, <laughs> come on! <laughs> oh, why? Okay, well, fix that first. Then it should be easy and simple because it's just priming and sanding and priming and sanding and priming and sanding, then painting. And then it's done. And then on Saturday, I have the full group Mighty Nine photo shoot that I get to bring this sword and the full costume to. I have already seen a bunch of the other cosplayers um, at the ALA meetup who are going to also be at the group shoot for Mighty Nine. They're all gonna look so beautiful. I'm so excited. <laughs> There's not much left to show you besides the sanding and painting, but that's pretty self-explanatory. Let's fix her real quick. <laughs> okay, uh, that easy and simple part that I just went on about, yeah, that was a lie. I did not have the time, materials, or tools required to make this sword nice and clean and polished. 3D prints need a lot of sanding. There are specific types of primer that I've recommended that I just don't have. I also glued these pieces together kind of sloppily, and the only sanding tool I have is some paper in my hands. And sadly at this point I had just about a day and a half to get it done. So the final sword is not a nice polished prop like she deserves to be. I still primed and painted Magician's Judge to bring to the Mighty Nine shoot, because there's always Photoshop to hide my shame. The day of the shoot has arrived! My wonderful friend Danica, our jester here, picked me up and drove us to a public park where we'd be meeting our photographers and the rest of our group. We had the full Mighty Nine, plus Essek and the Traveler, which made for some really fun group photos. There were some folks set up near us having some sort of concert music performance thing. It was a little, um, overwhelming <laughs> at this location, so we did end up walking to a new spot. That ended up being a great decision because the photos here are absolutely gorgeous. Um, walk us through it. This will probably be some sort of really explicit form. Um, 
This whole shoot is a dream come true. You're probably tired of hearing it by now, but y'all, I just love the Mighty Nine so, so much. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. I think just from these pictures and videos, you can tell just how much passion each and every one of us has for Critical Role. And it wasn't just big group photos either. Since we had four whole photographers with us, we got to break out and do our own little friendship and cute romance moments too. My lovely spouse captured some stunning shots of my Yasha cosplay that I am so happy to finally show you. Normally, I wouldn't advise for crunching this hard on a cosplay. Building a whole new costume in just seven days is madness, bonkers, bad for your physical and mental health. But just this once, for Critical Role, for this group, and this experience, it was worth it. You just love a show, or a movie, or a game, or a Dungeons and Dragons web series so much that the feelings are overflowing out of you, and you have to get it out somehow. You draw it out, or you craft it out, or you write it out. You show the world and add to a community of people who feel the same way as you do. Then getting to come together as a group, equally feeling all that passion and love, it's, it's just something else. I love the Mighty Nine, I love Critical Role, I love cosplay. It is the day after the Big Mighty Nine photo shoot. And while I am 100% happy with the photos and the videos that we got from the shoot, the costume itself could use some uh, updating. <laughs> now, I honestly did not give this sword enough time to be the best that she could be. The print itself is great. It's me that's the problem. 3D printed props like this need a lot of filling and priming and sanding. The kind of work that takes like more than a day and a half, which is what I gave myself. So I would like to strip this down back to its parts basically. Take it apart and take all the paint off and give it another go and like really try to put some high effort into it with the materials that she deserves. It did hold up for the photo shoot though. I really thought she would break. <laughs> The wig as well. Uh, it looks great. Visually stunning. However, I would prefer it not to leak ink all over my fingers when I wear it. And lastly, the pants. I 100% want to redo the pants. I want to get a gray fabric that doesn't fray when I stretch it over my fat ass. <laughs> and even despite all these issues, I love this cosplay. I can't wait to update her and wear her again to future events. And maybe I'll even get around to making those bone wings. I hope. But before I can get to that, I do have some other projects that I wanna work on. So what's next? Well, I did finish a wig for Orin the Red from Baldur's Gate 3. So I think that's going to be my next video. And I would like to bring her to Katsukan in mid-February, which is at this point about a month from now. Listen, if I could make Yasha in seven days, I could make Orin in a month. Pfft, easy. And then after Katsukan, I don't have another event until the summer, which gives me plenty of time to think about new builds. I do still want to do Dame Aelin from Baldur's Gate 3, and I also add level 20 Jester and Ford to my list for me and my spouse to match. But also, who knows? I keep adding characters to my cosplay list all the time because I'm insatiable and stupid. <laughs> Thank you for watching this Yasha build video. Thank you for making it all the way to the end. You can find my social media here. And I also hope that you can give some love to those other Mighty Nine cosplayers that are in this video. Their socials will be linked below. Also, I love the Mighty Nine. Uh, bye!